So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with our third episode of the offseason rebuilds, and today it's going to be the San Antonio Spurs. This Spurs team is very interesting. Obviously, they just had the first overall pick. This season, their team's not very competitive. They're very much out of the playoff race at this point in time. But they went ahead and drafted a generational talent last year, number one overall, Victor Wembanyama is the face of the franchise moving forward. This team is in a much better position than many other really bad teams right now. Our goal today is to turn this thing around within three off seasons, hopefully bring this franchise another championship. Of course, as always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. As I mentioned earlier, this is our third offseason rebuild. We're going to get to every single team eventually, as I'm sure many of you are aware. We're only doing the teams right now that are currently eliminated from postseason contention. So I had a couple of comments saying, hey, can you do the Rockets? Well, no, not yet, because technically still fighting for a playing spot. So we're going to get to all the teams eventually. I do promise but right now it's just going to be the bad teams that are out of contention and most likely the harder rebuild. So let me know what you want to see down below. Of course, anything you guys have, let me hear it down there. Let's get into this one. We'll quickly talk about this San Antonio Spurs roster. Again, there's not going to be a lot of time spent on it because there's not going to be a lot of guys here for all three years. So starting out the point guard spot, Trey Jones is definitely one of the bright spots on this team. He's only 24 years old. He's an 80 overall. He can definitely be a good depth option at some point in time. Probably never going to be a second or third option on a championship caliber team, but he's a nice player to have. Devontae Graham, probably not going to be here very long, just being honest with you. We have Blake Wesley here, who's only 21 at that 73. Again, if the development goes well, the numbers aren't terrible. Maybe we'll see as a rotation piece. Junior guard spot. Devin Vassell actually got paid by the San Antonio Spurs. He's now on a five-year, $135 million contract entering this offseason. That officially kicks in. Now, he's only 23. He's an 82 overall. I'm hoping his numbers continue to pop, continues to play well. If he does, maybe he stays around as our number two, number three option. But for that amount of money, there's probably some better players we can get for it. So hopefully he plays well. I don't want to trade him. Malachi Branham is here. Again, just going to be a rotational piece. He's never going to be a star for this team or anything. Kelton Johnson, I feel like I haven't heard a lot about this season. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if he's playing well. I don't know if he's not playing well. The contract isn't necessarily terrible. It's about, what is that, $16 million? No, it's less than $16 million a year. I'm fucking terrible with math. Whatever that is, 15, 16 million a year, it's obviously very much doable. We can live with that kind of price tag. So 80 overall, it's not bad at all. Julian Champagny, depth, I guess. City Sissoko, probably never going to crack the rotation. Jeremy Sohan, somebody for me that if he develops well, I know obviously the numbers aren't going to pop. He's not going to be a 20 point per game guy, but it's definitely a nice piece to have. Teddy Osman, veteran. Uh, obviously, Victor Wembanyama, the generational talent. Former number one overall pick is already pushing a 90 overall. Zach Collins, I cannot pronounce this dude's name for the life of me. And then Dominic Barlow here as well. Charles Bassey's here. Um, injuries are obviously not on, but when you have to go ahead and you start today, they do have them on. Um, all right, cool. Player retirements. I always override LeBron James' retirement. You guys know that. Nobody in the Hall of Fame. Jersey retirements, no thank you. And now we'll enter the draft lottery, which could be very big for us. We are currently projected the number four overall pick. I'm pretty sure that's Charlotte pick has some protections on it let's go ahead and see what happens here we end up with the number five overall pick which honestly isn't that bad um it's definitely something i can live with i feel like we end up with the number five overall pick very very often throughout these videos it's fine it is what it is um popovich is here in coaching free agency i guess if you want to call it that technically pretty sure he actually signed like a very big contract extension recently but we're gonna bring him back he'll be here as long as he wants to be until he retires okay up to the draft number five overall pick is definitely a nice piece there are a couple different directions we can go with this we also have the 19th overall pick in round number two uh, i will either see you guys in the draft or with the trade I've decided to hang on to the number five overall pick. I feel like whenever I have number five overall, I tend to trade it. So you know what? Let's take it number five. Saloon, Saloon, I'm terrible with names. This draft class is very weird to me. You know, there's not like a clear cut. You know, there's no Victor Wembanyama. There's no Zion Williamson. There's no LeBron James here. So um, we're just going to see who goes. Donovan Klingon as your number two overall pick. The UConn product having a pretty good tournament run so far. Number three is Alexander Saar. He ends up going to the Wizards. The seven foot one center out of France was probably never going to be on our draft board. I don't know how well him and Wimbledon Yama would fit, but he's there. Babakar Miller is out of Florida State. He's going to be the next pick, which means Zachary Rizache. Rizache. I'm again, I'm terrible with names, but feels like he probably is the correct pick. I mean, looking at everybody else here, Nikola Topic could definitely be an option for us. Cody Williams, Stefan Cassell. Ron Holland, Matas Buzelis, Reed Shepard, Robert Dillingham. I mean, there are definitely some really good players here, but I think Zachary 
probably going to be my guy. Again, I'm probably just completely butchering the pronunciation. I've seen it ricochet. I mean, it's just, I'm terrible. It's just, it's not even funny. But he's going to be my guy. And then we'll take our second round pick. Why not? I don't know who we're going to get here. PJ Hall. Why does that name sound? Clem oh, that's why. Clemson. Uh, I just watched Clemson in the tourney. Johnny Murphy. I don't know much about Aaron Bradshaw. Oh, seven foot one out of Kentucky. That actually excites me quite a bit. Kentucky big men tend to do pretty well in the NBA. Why not? All right, 77 overall, 71 overall for Bradshaw. Not too bad. Team player options, Sohan, Branham, and Wesley all going to be coming back here to San Antonio. I'm Dominic Barlow could probably get a qualifying. Why not? I'll qualify. It's two million bucks. Okay, we take a look here at free agency. I believe we probably will have some money. Probably not a lot of money. Actually, we have no money. Wow, that's actually a little bit of a surprise. Who's eating up all our cap space? Um, oh, well, Collins getting 16. Oh, Devontae Graham getting 12 million. All right. Well, that kind of makes sense. I think at this point in time, it is definitely time for some sort of trade. Um, I know, again, this team's not going to be flipped into a contender in one offseason, but we want to trend in the right direction. So let's find a move. We are pulling off a blockbuster here with the Atlanta Hawks. Yes, the rumors are going to come true. Trey Young and Victor Wembanyama are going to be teammates here in San Antonio. Now, I know I am paying a hefty price. I'm giving up a lot of rotational pieces, plus Keldon Johnson, but ultimately to get away with a player as good as Trey Young without giving up a single first-round draft pick feels like an absolute home run to me. On top of the fact that we are getting a really nice backup center here in Clint Capella. So uh, I actually made an offer. This is what they countered with, why they want this package. I have no idea, but Trey Young officially going to be a San Antonio Spur. Big trade to start this offseason. Our next trade is going to come with the New Orleans Pelicans, and it is as follows. Clint Capella, Blake Wesley, and a 2028 first-round pick swap with the Boston Celtics, heading to New Orleans for Herb Jones and Larry Nance Jr. I'm a big fan of Herb Jones. I'm sure many of you know this. Ultimately, whether he starts or comes off the bench, he's going to be a very, very important piece for us. Larry Nance Jr. will be a quality backup center, maybe. I don't know if I'm going to keep him or not. Clint Capella is a fine piece. I'd rather go ahead and get a guy like Herb Jones, who's significantly younger, cheaper, and better. That is going to be our second trade of the offseason. And now kind of just looking at the rotation, we obviously have Trey Young, Trey Jones, Vassell, and then I also have an idea of maybe playing Herb Jones at the backup behind Rizache. Again, I'm probably going to start him just based off potential. I like Herb Jones a lot, but we kind of know what he's going to be, right? You know, he's probably never going to be that superstar second option on a team, whatever the hell you want to call it. So having him as a really solid kind of backup small forward option, I think makes a lot of sense, especially on a team like this that's not necessarily going to be winning any team, anything, at least heading into next season. So um, I'm up in the air on what I want to do with Larry Nance Jr. He's an expiring contract, and there is a world out there where I actually do want to get Bradshaw some playing time. So maybe I just move Larry Nance Jr. for something else. You know, I don't know exactly what that other piece is. I hate to say it, but Grant Williams might not be the worst idea in the world. Just because, again, multi-year contract. Ooh, but P.J. Washington's actually probably an even better option. Okay, P.J. Washington will be the backup here. I'm going to give Sohan at least one more year as the starter, and we'll go from there. And then you know what? Why not? Victor Wembanyama is going to be playing 35-plus minutes of the center position for us. Aaron Bradshaw, big man out of Kentucky, maybe a little bit of potential there. Why not give him 10 or so minutes a night? So, you know what, man? We are kind of all set. I never even really checked if we have any other free agents. City Sissoko probably just really not a lot of use for him here when there's just really not a lot of options for him actually getting minutes. I mean, do we have any free agents? Honestly, nobody I'm really interested in bringing back. So you know what? I'm going to let everybody go. I will see you guys at the start of year number one. I'm very excited about the possibilities for this Spurs team here in year number one. We went ahead and made the blockbuster trade, acquiring Trey Young from the Atlanta Hawks. Maybe a possibility this offseason, who the hell knows, but this team is in a very, very good position heading into the three years ahead of us in this rebuild. So Trey Young, Devin Vassell, Zachary Rizache is going to be my starting small forward. Game wants Herb Jones to start. Actually, what I'll tell you this, funny enough, if I auto-set this, which I'm not going to do, I just spent a lot of time setting this, I have no idea why. I, I've never seen anything like this. The game actually wants Trey Jones to start over Trey Young. The minutes might not say it. I have never in my life said, you know what, I'll just... No, I don't want to show you. It's going to take way too long. I promise you, for whatever reason, this game wants Trey Jones to start. I have no idea why. Sohan and then Victor Wembanyama. Bench unit. Herb Jones will be my sixth man. Trey Jones is going to follow him. P.J. Washington. Malachi Branham. And then Aaron Bradshaw getting some run. Again, not anything significant. If he shows me a little bit of something, maybe he can be a backup center for the entirety of the video. We'll see. But again, maybe this team sneaks into the plan. Maybe we're a playoff team. Who the hell knows? See you guys at the end of year number one. Year one wraps up. It is an MVP award for Nikola Jokic, one of many throughout the course of his career so far. We go 39 and 43, which ultimately is not that bad. I can definitely live with that 
for a first season on one of the worst teams in the league. So I'll take it. Alexander Sari, rookie of the year, ended up in D.C., was the third overall pick. Good numbers. Jer- J- oh, Jaren Duran. Jalen Duran is now an Oklahoma City Thunder, and he is your sixth man of the year. I don't know why the Pistons are giving up on him, but nobody's ever accused the Pistons of being a competent franchise. Victor Wembanyama is your deep boy. Again, our superstar future GOAT center. Love it. I really do. Jaden Hardy, most improved. Damian Lillard, clutch player of the year. Mark Dagnalt, head coach of the Thunder. Takes home coach of the year honor. So we are, let's just see where we fell. I didn't see exactly. We are, wow, we tied with the Jazz. They must have had the tiebreaker. They take that final play in spot. So, um, again, nobody was expecting us to actually contend this season, but again, a step in the right direction, if you will. Points per game was when, or excuse me, Trey Young, Victor Wembanyama, Devin Vassell, Riz Shea, Sohan, Jones, Jones, Washington, Branham, and then Bradshaw. But actually, not bad for 10 minutes a game for Aaron Bradshaw. I know these aren't exact science, but the per 36 numbers, pretty talented, I'll say so myself. Rebounds a game, obviously, Victor, and then assists was Trey Young. So, we'll sim through the playoffs. Of course, it is somewhat heartbreaking that we are not going to be able to be involved in this. Nonetheless, it is a Cavaliers and a Thunder Finals. Thunder, wow, almost blew a very big lead, but they do hold on. Win in seven. SGA, your finals MVP. All right, let's get into it. Uh, I obviously cannot override LeBron's retirement twice, so the GOAT will end up retiring after the 25 season. And uh, yeah, he's going to enter the Hall of Fame. Gets his jersey retired by three franchises. Um, All right, let's check it out. What are we looking at here? I see we're currently projected number six from Charlotte. I'm going to fact check that, though. Our pick at 12 and then that Atlanta Hawks pick, which I'm not sure where it came from. I'm going to check on all these once they once I see where they fall. Um, all right, so our holy shit, that Spurs, or excuse me, that Charlotte Hornets pick ended up at number two. Now, whenever I do a rebuild of a bad team and one of our future first-round picks is owned by somebody else, the protections are not always accurate. So I'm going to do the same thing on the flip side today when we have another team's future first-round pick that's protections. May not be accurate. I'm just going to confirm if it's unprotected, I'll obviously keep it. If not, I'm going to send it back to its rightful owner. Feels like the responsible thing to do. Also, how the hell do the Kings have the first overall pick? Uh, On top of that, having the number two overall pick, we also have number 11 from Atlanta and then number 12 on our own. So let me fact check all these and I'll see you guys at whatever's next. As I suspected, we are not going to be able to keep the number two overall pick. It absolutely kills me, but when I take advantage of something that benefits me, I also have to do kind of the other side of that. I have to be honest, and when things don't benefit me, I have to give the team back their rightful pick. It would have been awesome to have the number two overall pick. Fortunately, we're going to have two seconds. I'll just read you guys this off of Fanspo. I'm assuming it's accurate. It was actually 2024 originally. Charlotte's first round pick to San Antonio Spurs protected for selections 1 through 14 in 2024. Obviously, it did not convey that year. It was protected 1 through 14. I think it was like number 3 or whatever. And 1 through 14 in 2025. Number 2 overall is definitely 1 through 14, meaning it's going back to Charlotte. This game fucks that up every time. It's one of my favorite things about it. Uh, If Charlotte has not conveyed a first round pick to San Antonio by 2025, then Charlotte will instead convey its 2026 and 2027 second round picks so for the number two overall selection we get two future seconds i hate it but it's what we got to do that atlanta pick is owned by the spurs already it's there's no protections on it so we will still have two lottery picks it's unfortunate they're not as high as i originally wanted them to be but uh, oh we actually have a third first round pick from the chicago bulls that's pretty nice now i'm not going to hang on to all of these picks i think we already have a lot of quality depth on this team but I think there's something we can do with some of these draft picks. We are sending number 17 overall in round one, then number 10 in 22 in round two to Miami for two future unprotected first round picks. Look, I don't need all of these draft picks these year. And uh, we already have two that I... Oh, wait, shit. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I need to make sure he's pop official. Yes, he is. Um, I didn't need all those draft picks. I think we can all probably agree on that. There's already a lot of depth here. I am going to draft somebody at both number 11 and number 12. Now, am I going to keep both those players? Probably not, but going ahead and drafting somebody is going to give me a little bit of value. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with all of it, but we'll figure it out. All right, Drake Powell looks like he could be the highest rated prospect on the board right now. 75 overall, Flory Badunga is also here. Carter Bryant and Ding Patel I don't know a lot about, and I'm not going to pretend that I do. Richie Guerin, Chris Weber, Alex English. All right, Drake Powell is going to be my guy here, and then I don't know who the hell we're going to draft here. I guess Flory Badunga is fine by me. Again, I don't know if we're going to keep either of these players just good value to have. 75 overalls for both of them. All right, Victor Wembanyama, Sohan, and Branham and Bradshaw all going to be coming back here. Now I think it's time for a potential blockbuster trade. I have a couple ideas in mind. I'll be back. 
I'm a huge Jalen Williams fan. I absolutely love his game. I think he's going to be a future star in this league for a very long time if he's already not one. Drake Powell, who we just drafted, Malachi Branham is what I'm going to offer in order to maybe acquire Mr. Jalen Williams. He's a little bit undersized for a power forward option for me. Worst comes to worst, maybe we'll have him start at the three and then we can have Rizzo Shade at the bench. Whatever it's going to be, that's a future problem. But I'd love to add Jalen Williams to this team. I know I obviously cannot get him for nothing. I'd be willing to give up Bradshaw, who just had a really good kind of rookie season for us, mostly because we just drafted Flory Badunga. They take that deal. Welcome to the team, Jalen Williams. So um, at this point in time, there's nothing wrong with Sohan. His numbers across the board are kind of what I expected out of him, but ultimately we needed an upgrade. Jalen Williams definitely provides that for me. So we take a look at free agency here. We have Trey, excuse me, I almost said Ty Jones. Trey Jones as a free agent. I'll offer him about a four-year, $67 million deal. That's fine by me. He's a good backup point guard option for us here. And then I think... In terms of any other major trades, I mean, we're good at the point guard spot. I do want to figure out a backup shooting guard. Rizache and Jones. What I mean I could just do is like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. All right, so I'm either going to trade P.J. Washington for a backup small forward or a backup shooting guard, and then ultimately Herb Jones will be the backup of whichever one of those positions I don't trade for. So let's just see. Washington was fine for us for a season, ultimately a depth pick expiring contract. Let's see. Um, ooh, I actually like the – I don't want to give up a draft pick, though. Trey Mann actually feels like a home run of a trade. That really, you know what? That's the trade. That is, ooh. I see Jordan Hawkins. I like Jordan Hawkins. Um, I fucking hate Grayson Allen. Um, okay, we're going to make this trade here with the Charlotte Hornets. A one-for-one -one swap, I guess, sending P.J. Washington back to Charlotte. I mean, it's kind of a full full 360 for him. But no, Trey Mann going to be the backup to Vassell. We're all settled. See you guys at the start of year number two. Last season, we lost the tiebreaker. Unfortunately, did not get to participate in the play-in tournament. This year, we've made some upgrades. We're seeing some nice development. I think we should definitely be a playoff team. I truly do believe that. Here's how it's going to look. Trey Young, Devin Vassell remain the backcourt here. Riz is still going to be my starter at the small forward spot. I don't want to say it's his last chance because that's fucking insane to say for a second-year player, but I know in only a three-year rebuild, you kind of got to pick and choose your battles. So we're going to see. I expect decent things out of him, but again, those numbers might not pop just because of how much talent is around him. Jalen Williams here is my starting power forward, and then Victor Wembanyama up to a 96 overall. It's insane. Uh, Herb Jones remains the sixth man off the bench. Jeremy Slohan slides in behind him. Trey Jones, who, funny enough, the game still wants to start over Trey Young. I don't understand it. I do not at all. It's insane. Uh, Trey Mann, new addition here as well. And then Flor Badunga as our backup center. How many trays on this team do we have? Is that three? We have three. That's awesome. All right, man. Um, this team's very good. I fully expect to be a playoff team. I'll see you guys at the end of year two. 56 and 26. That is our much improved record here at the end of year two. We are clearly going to be a playoff team and maybe even battling for a championship. Who knows? It is yet another MVP for Mr. Nicole Jokic. Dylan Harper is your rookie of the year. He is a member of the Sacramento Kings. What the hell? Why is Paolo a sixth man? <laughs> God. Another defensive player of the year for Victor Wembanyama. Robert Dillingham, most improved. Jason Tatum, clutch player of the year. Jamal Mosley, head coach of the Orlando Magic with Paolo as a sixth man. So obviously they have some sort of superstar as their power forward. They win 61 games. I'm just curious. Oh, so how the hell did Scotty Barnes get here? And Chris Middleton, you know what? I'm not even going to ask questions. We are a two-seed here in the Western Conference, meaning we are going to be facing a play-in team. Let's check out the numbers on the year, see how everybody played. It was Trey Young, Wembenyama, Jalen Williams, Vassell, Rizache, Sohan Jones, Jones, Mann, and Floriot Badunga. Rebounds for game, oh my god, 14, and assists Trey Young. Nine and a half. All right, who's it going to be? It is us and the Golden State Warriors, an aging team with some young talent like Podjemski. Taylor Hendricks is here as well. They got Draymond playing the center spot. A very interesting matchup for him and Victor Wembanyama. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, we go up 3-0, and okay, they fight back a little bit, but it is too much, and we win. Moving on to the Western Conference semifinals. What would it be? Four-time MVP, Victor Wembanyama? Or Victor Wembanyama. Nicole Jokic now. I mean, you got to battle of two of the best centers in the league here. It looks like they have lost Jamal Murray. Michael Porter Jr. now coming off the bench. So I am interested to see how this series is going to go. We're up 3-0. And we're in the West Finals. We are taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're very good. SGA is an absolutely fantastic player. MVP caliber. They did trade us Jalen Williams, though. Now they do have Jalen Duran. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty confident in our group. I'm not going to lie to you. We win game one, win game two, lose three, win four, and don't choke. Oh, my God. Don't choke. We blew a 3 lead. A 3 one lead. Fucking A, man. God damn it. The fucking Pacers, too. That's so beatable. Maybe not. I don't know. Tyrese Halliburton playing out of his mind. All right. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're there. I mean, we can get this done. The talent is here. We just... Ah, 
I think another year of development is going to benefit this team immensely. So I'm not going to make any probably blockbuster moves, but we are we are damn close right now. Uh, did Popovich still not retire? I didn't even look. Holy shit, Popovich still go. I don't know if I've ever seen him still coached in like the third year of one of these rebuilds. That's insane. All right, up to the draft. What's our draft pick situation look like? We still have a couple firsts. Yeah, honestly, I just I don't need them. So, I mean, I'm probably not going to actually make a trade with them. But, you know, year three, unless it's like the number one overall pick or like a seriously high lottery pick, typically the picks don't help super much. Why would I not pick up Trey Young's team? This game hates Trey Young. They're recommending I have him come off the bench as a six-man. Now they want me to decline his team option, which, by the way, why does he have a team option? I've never seen like a player sign like a max extension like he did and then have it be a team option for the final year. I feel like it's always a player option. I don't know. Jalen Williams, Jeremy Sohan are definitely both priorities to get back this offseason. However, they are both restricted. I'm not terribly or terribly worried about it. So Sohan and William. Wow, Sohan wants a lot of money. Holy shit. We do get them both back, though, which is, of course, the important thing. So... I mean, I know I'm not making any major trades. There might be one more. I don't want to say absolutely not because I still think one more trade would benefit this team. But honestly, everything looks good. And I know another year of development is going to benefit everybody greatly. It's just, do we think we have enough right now? Right? I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. I think the big three of women, Yama, Young, and Williams is fantastic. And obviously a really good surrounding cast. But like, do we trust Riza Shea heading in? To this final season, a championship or bust season as our starting small forward? I mean, I don't know the answer to that. But I don't really want to pull the trigger on a trade because I feel like I always trade these guys. So, you know what? We're going to roll with the punches. We're going to hang in with everything we got right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually maybe one of the smarter things I've ever done. I'm going to sign a guy like Marcus Smart. We're going to sign him to a relatively big contract. And then maybe next season, we'll go ahead and trade him at the start of the season if we don't like the way progression looks. I'll see you guys at the start of year three. Year three's here, and we're starting it off with a blockbuster. It is not a trade I necessarily thought I was going to make, but ultimately, Rizzoche is just, that overall is not going up. It's unfortunate. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, we're going to pull this off here with the Utah Jazz. So Smart, Rizzoche, and Jones all heading to Utah for Keontae George and Larry Markkinen as well. So Markkinen, obviously, going to be my starting small forward, and then George is going to back up Trey Young. So um, it wasn't a move that I think was championship or bust, but it's definitely going to solidify this starting lineup and the bench unit for that matter, and I really think it's going to be maybe just that final little move that puts us over the edge let's set the rotation after yet another blockbuster trade one that i maybe wasn't necessarily expecting but we still did it we are ready to go here for the final season in san antonio this team on paper is an absolute god squad a lot of depth quality depth at that the stars are here we're ready for a championship we truly are trey young devin vassell larry marketing jalen williams victor Wembanyama are one through five keanchi george gonna be my new six man off the bench jeremy sohan still here herb jones trey mann and flory badunga rounding out this 10-man rotation so all the talent in the world under one of the greatest head coaches in the history of basketball it should be a championship. It should. I'll see you guys at the end of the final regular season. What a perfect way to end our final regular season. Victor Wembanyama. that is his first career MVP award. Those numbers are absolutely insane. We go 72-10, and 10, tying the second best record in the history of basketball. Hopefully it results in a championship. Cameron Boozer is your rookie of the year. Ace Bailey, six man. Wembenyama, another deep boy. Carlton Carrington, most improved. Steph Curry at age 39, clutch player of the year. And Pop, coach of the year, I'm sure. I don't even know how many of these awards he's won. I'm assuming it's probably a few. All right, we are 13 games up on the Thunder. We had the best record in all of basketball. Here are the numbers on the season. When Benyama, Young, Marketing, Williams, Vassell, Joy. I mean, just who cares at this point, right? Rebound's going to be Wemby and assist with Trey Young. First round of the playoffs, we have the Sacramento Kings, KPJ, Harper, AJ, Gordon, Sabonis. I mean, there's just no, not a fucking chance, right? There's just no way. Okay, goes to six. Houston Rockets here. Fred Van Vliet, Amen Thompson, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith. Not a lot of big... Why is Jalen Green not in the starting five, right? F figure it out. Find a way. I mean, that's just... That's my take. Also, where's Shen Yun? I don't know. Okay, we go up to... I'll oh, make it 3-0. They do win game four, and we close them out in five. Western Conference Finals. This team was in the finals last year. And uh, you know what? I think we can beat them. I truly do. We are 1-1 right now. We go up 2-1. They tie it at 2. We go up 3-2. We're in the finals. For the first time in this video, we're in the finals. Taking on the defending champs here in the Indiana Pacers. We're pretty good. They got Austin Reeves next to Hallie, Ben Mather, and Walker. Oh, this is where Shingun went. Cooper flags off the bench. Wow, Vucevic is here. Pretty talented Pacers team, if I do say so myself. We are up 2-1 right now. We go up 3-1. That's a win. That is a championship in our final regular season. And Victor Wembanyama, a finals MVP. Holy shit. 
I mean, what a way to end this one. This team was absolutely insane. I didn't think we were going to put a team together this good. But after the Trey Young trade happened, I was like, we're just, we're coasting, man. We just got we got to find the right pieces around them. We're good. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. That is it for me, though. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.